Okay. Well, let's get into uh, the utility knife of LaVisca Chanel. Is that wait the utility knife? No, I said that wrong. What what word? What I'm was I going? Swiss for? Army knife. Swiss Army knife. Swiss yes, Army knife. The utility knife. <laughs> Some type of knife. He cuts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, first off, if, if people don't know his story about his hair, that's a pretty interesting story too. Pretty sad. Yeah, you want? I actually don't know that, that story. Yeah, so uh, when he was, I can't remember how young he was, Jared. If you remember this offhand, I, think I want it was to say ten, like twelve. Yeah, ten to twelve. Yeah. Um, his they got a flat tire, and his dad got out to change the flat tire, and he just got hit and killed. And so, okay. yeah, this is just a way for him to kind of remember his his dad, which I think is growing up without him. You know, just makes you want to root for a guy a little bit more, you know. Um, and that's the other thing, too, that I know we're so critical of players. And, you know, I think people think, like, we're, we're hating, you know. I want all these guys to succeed. I want Brian Edwards to succeed. I want David Montgomery to succeed, whoever, because this is their job. Mm-hmm. This is their livelihood. We're just here trying to give you the best fantasy advice. But I want all these guys to succeed because of their their life and their people that their their life is more important than our fantasy yeah and this is life-changing money too like that affects Mm -hmm. not just them but their entire families um but yeah so lavisca chenault um he has a he has an injury history that are causing a lot of that's causing a lot of pause to a lot of people uh rightfully so he had surgery on a torn labrum and surgery on a turf toe in 2018 going into 2019 and then he just missed the combine because of pubic bone, whatever that is, um, he needed surgery on that too. So definitely some red flags there with being injured a lot, missing games. Um, but from what I've read from sports doctors and stuff is that it's really nothing to be worried about for, you know, anything to worry about down the road that's going to affect him. I think these injuries were kind of all one-off freak type things. So I'm not sh- too, sh- too sure we should be worried about it. But I do know that a lot of people are looking at that as red flags. Yeah, th- this is a guy I think that's going to have a wide range of outcomes, uh, potentially. Uh, as far as being a good athlete and just a good football player, that's what he's best at. Um, but there's a lot of room to grow technically as a player. And then you have the injury history. So, you know, he could end up being one of the better receivers in this class. He could end up, you know, being injured and, and, and not getting to play anymore. So um, there, there's a wide range of outcomes for this kid. Well, I mean, I think if you want to think of a, of a player where there's some, like, uncertainty there, you know, the, the good end of it would be Demarius Thomas coming from a what's he going to develop out of this run-based offense in Georgia Tech. He's a good athlete, mm-hmm. you know, not def- not really – great as a route runner, you know, what's it going to happen for him? You know, someone said Patterson, I think you could say Demarius Thomas. Cause I think, I think Visca is a better wide receiver right now than Patterson ever was at Tennessee. Yeah. I think but a lot of people the downside to comparing the Cordero because of all the different positions and they run them on jet sweeps and stuff all the time, run them, line them up at running back, all that kind of stuff. Mm. I just think that speaks to how good he is. Yeah. He's a hell of an athlete. You see, you just see this the fluidity. I mean, he plays at Colorado, everybody. <laughs> He's got Steven Montez throwing him the football. <laughs> I mean, I know Lindsay was there for you, but I mean, it's Colorado. You know what I mean? Of course. Oh, he's good. Put him in running back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you don't have three players, you know? That is true. You don't have right, any. So let's. Let's remove the injury concerns while we're talking about this for the rest of the time because we know those are there. As a as an actual player, what are what are we seeing? So like right here, go, if you go back and you you look at this release off the line of scrimmage, he doesn't use his feet. No, yeah, at all. He's frozen in sand. Just uses his hands and he gets hit. Can't get off the line, and it's not a touchdown. Now if he uses his feet and he stems inside just like Edwards did, he'd already have the separation. He would have had a touchdown here. That's right. the difference right now, that he doesn't have those little things. Yeah. Silver Sports said, but South Carolina employed the football version of Henry Rowan Gardner after he broke his arm a second time at quarterback. <laughs> what an example. <laughs> uh, 
Oh. Look at the look at the balance to be able to to keep his feet here. That's that's a tough play getting hit that quickly after catching the football. And that's the raw athleticism that you're going to get with with Chanel is you know what? He might not do it technically right, but he's, he he figures out a way often to make plays. Mm -hmm. People say, you know, the comp Patterson just his athleticism. I think Patterson's way more athletic than him. I think if you comp him to early career, and again, we always think of late career when we think of players. Mm -hmm. Think of early career Brandon Marshall when he came out. That's pretty I don't hate that. Me. I don't hate Physical. that. Oh, look at that. He caught that. Yeah, he did. That's a hell of a catch. Because the, the corner actually had the position wow. on him. Yes. Uh, he shouldn't have made that play, which tells you it probably he didn't probably sell the route very well. Nope. But he figured out a way to make a play. Yeah, that's right. And at the end of the day, you got to give him credit. Yeah, for I mean, that. he just does nothing off the line. Like, he doesn't. No. Nope. It's like high school for him. He's just out athleting people right now. Now, does that concern? Uh, you know, I always go to to, to Nick on this because I see his face. I I have the icon; <laughs> it's just the Jared icon, so I can't even see him. So I always got to like just go to Nick because I can see him. Jared, do you think like at the next level is that something that worries you? Is is he going to be athlete enough? Is he going to be football player enough to make up for that, or will he be able to learn some of those things at the next level that you think? you're not concerned about some of these technical deficiencies. No, I think he's definitely going to have to develop some sort of these technical skills. Um, and a lot of, a lot of people say how raw he is and he is raw, but he definitely has the skills to work with as far as athleticism goes. I'm trying to find the play. Yeah, this play, he came, he came off the line pretty Pretty quick here. He does show good burst. Mm -hmm. I don't think his level of athleticism is ever the issue. I think it's using his athleticism in a way that makes him the most efficient yeah. player is the concern. And um, I mean, there he got inside. He stacked him. I mean, that's not a bad route right there. Yeah, I forget what exactly it was, but I know that throughout 2018, he was pretty banged up. Through 2019, he was playing through injuries, so not sure that we've seen him at a full 100 percent the last two years. <laughs> Look at Montez fall down here. Go back. <laughs> Is it this one? the next play? <laughs> you got it to him though. <laughs> I just tosses it a touchdown. <laughs> I've been there. Uh, someone just said he's a he's a modern day Green Lantern. Do you know who that is, Garrett? Oh, you're looking. Huh? Modern, modern day, day, like day Green, Green Lantern. Lantern, like the like the superhero, or is this a is this a nickname of a player that I have no idea who? Is? I, I, Wayne Corbett. Do you guys remember Wayne Corbett? Didn't they call him the Green Lantern? The didn't uh, who is it? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't Marcel's know. Who named him that. He's a no superhero, right? I know that, but there's like a little thing. All right. Like, uh, he's like uh, Carlos Lantern. said. Uh... <laughs> These are two different players. Is he a better player than Jalen Samuels or Debo? Huh, those are two unique options. Um, Jalen Samuels, I, I get, I get why you put him in there because the kind of the Swiss Army knife type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in a different way, he was more. Is he a tight end? Is he an H back? Is he a running back? Um, Debo has some of the after the catch ability uh, that. Uh, um, that you see with with Visca, um, because he does kind of turn into, and Debo does this a little bit too, where they kind of turn into running backs uh, in the open field, uh, and so that's something that you like to see out of those guys. Ooh, that's a tough drop. Um, his hands well here off the line. Uh, yeah, he yeah, catches that really well. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm not sure I would comp him to either one of those players, but I understand why you gave both of those options because of the utility and the yards after the catch. So I do think that's in his game, but I, I don't know if I would say he's like either one of those guys. Yeah, took his eye off of yeah you got to come down with that one. Shouldn't have the popcorn. Oh, he moved his feet off the line here, Nick. I know. I'd like to see him I mean, these, use these his hands more. and Get outside a little bit. Yeah, he allowed the corner to get his hands on him here. He's, he's got to rip through. Yep. 
I mean, I mean, half of the battle is just making the corner think it's a two-way go. And what that means is thinking that you can go either way, left or right at them. Yeah. And when you only go one way, they get their hands on you automatically. So one step this way, even if he doesn't move and open that way, at least makes him think that. Okay, that was a quick one. Decent game. Obviously, is raw. All right, what's this next game here? Who do you got on this one? We have USC. Oh, USC. I think we watched Pittman against Colorado. So it's... Yeah. Bad throw. Probably grabbed them both. Yep. I don't like that he gathered himself before he made this cut out. If you watch him, why does he just run out? He gathers himself he, and then comes out and lays it. Yeah, standing straight, straight, straight up. It's a terrible throw, Montez. He's not good. No, he's not very good. Ooh, look at that run. Run through this arm tackle. Here you go, boy. Oh, see the ref. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Josh Cribs 2.0. That ain't bad. No, don't Not good for much. fantasy. Josh Cribs is good, man. Hell yeah, he was. I love Cribs. Oh, yeah, you Cleveland boys, you know Josh Cribs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're well aware. Him and Edelman, both Kent State so, quarterbacks. So let, me, let me throw you, I don't know if I did this on this show. I remember I said it recently. An old school Cleveland quarterback that for like one game I watched and they had so much respect for him. Kelly Holcomb. Remember him? Oh, yeah, man. Was it against Pittsburgh? Is yes, that the game? Remember that comeback? Yep. And he was like yep. beat up. He had like Did Kevin Kelly Johnson. Was... He got himself a job with again. Buffalo for a little bit after after that. Yep. Where are those receivers now? William Green. William <laughs> Green. <laughs> he got stabbed in the ben back. Ben Gay was around that time too. Uh, not a bad. Yeah. Lee Suggs. Doesn't really. See, when he makes this break, you'd like to see him pump back. And pump Montez. his arms He's again. Look at him avoid. And run out of that break. He just kind of stops. I mean, he, he sold it to the inside to gain himself a little separation, though. Yeah, I just like, like to see him, inside, on the him come inside, then Run he stops and comes back out. Okay, okay. And he, he let up, yeah. Yeah. I like, to, I like to see him getting two feet in there, too. Um, I know that doesn't matter for college, but it does for the next level. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, sometimes I'm so baffled that receivers can do that on the sidelines. Like, isn't the XFL man, they're one just, foot? They're, but they're just so good. Like, I mean, how do they have the body control to do that and catch the ball and come down with it? And, yeah, it's crazy. Know. That's a terrible route. <laughs> no one thought he was going inside on that route. Give him some room to work with here. Oh, he got that. Yep. Let's run. Let's watch back, that again. Go back to the route, though. Yeah. Because the corner is not believing any of that at all. Nope. No. Run inside. Him. Let's watch it again. And, and, and that's one of the problems that actually, you know, it's interesting. I had about Sanu coming out. Or actually, no, it wasn't Sanu. Who's the other Rutgers receiver that came after Sanu? Um... That's painful. Do you guys not remember who it was? Um, Rutgers after Sanu. Mm. Can't think of it. But anyways, I, there's there's something with I can like running. picture him, but like I can't. There's something about running your routes as quickly as you can. There's running your routes with a purpose. And like right there, he like made a move inside and had no purpose to it. You know what I mean? It's just wasted movement. You have to have purpose with all of the things that you do on the football field. And just running fast you have to that's why like Diggs isn't the fastest guy ever but he uses his speeds so well judy uses his speeds so well that's that's what's important you know attacking the frame of the corner inside using their technique against them you know all that stuff is the most important thing it's not your 40 time kenny Britt was ruckers yeah he's after him he's with... before him uh leont leonte Carew. Leonte Carew, thank you. That's who it was. <laughs> I was just looking it up. Like I would not have got that. 
Yeah, Lance Decker just ran his routes as hard as he could all the time, and I liked him a little bit, but he you have to vary your speeds and have a purpose. Yeah, I thought Edwards did a good job of that. Hmm. I always say Justin that it's Jefferson like you're, does a good job of that too. You're like an actor. You're you're selling a pole, a role, you know, a a route. Same thing. So here here's something that you know we mentioned with with Edwards that he was able to shield uh, the defender from the ball. And granted, that's a bad throw. It's behind him, but I would have liked to have seen him kind of box out a little bit more on that, make sure that it's a that's his ball. Yeah. Well, like like there, if like if you go back from the start, so he starts this corner's inside shade, yeah, him, right? Yeah, and he right. just he just runs towards him. If he stays straight, the corner might fade towards him, and then he comes inside. Yeah, those little things make feet and inches and receptions happen. I mean, how interested yeah. can you be I, playing at Colorado? I mean, you're playing against USC, man. Like, I know, just like you can't you can't get an accurate ball thrown your way. Like you're out here busting your ass. Just like it's got to be frustrating. Yeah, they won a national title in like '91, didn't they, man? <laughs> That's true. I don't know. I was too. I forgot about that. You're t- get back. Oh, my girlfriend wasn't even born yet. Let me see this release here. Did we see something? So will he ever be able to profile as a as an X receiver? Um, is he going to have to run more out of the slot? Is he going to be used as a solely a gadget player that just kind of lines up everywhere but doesn't ever really have a true home like? What are we what are we expecting this to translate to? Because you know, where he lines up on a regular basis does impact his fantasy production. For me, it's just gonna depend on how much he evolves. He's gonna to have to put the work in. If he doesn't put the work in, he's the slot. If he okay. puts the work in, he could do anything. Okay. What I'm seeing right now is not somebody that you're gonna line up at wide receiver and call him your number one. He's going to take some time to take some development. He's, I mean, honestly, Nikhil Harry isn't a bad comp. Nikhil Harry was a bad route runner. Nikhil Harry he was, but more. he was more efficient than he was. Than but I'm just saying, in that realm, like, there's a lot of work that has to be done. And you saw what happened last year with Nikhil. I know people yeah. say he's hurt. He still played half the season and got 100 yards receiving. Yeah. Yeah. I see him actually as more of a slot receiver, too. Just lining him up there, you're able to do more with him too. Reverse. Well, and you're able to utilize some more of his yards after the catch ability. Like right there, fakes inside, outside, then inside. I think I have Chanel 11. I can't remember. I'm pretty low on him as well. Um, you have some people that really love him that have him, you know, just outside of, you know, Judy and. And, and and Lamb, but I think overall the temperature on him has cooled quite a bit um, mm-hmm. since the start of the season. Yeah, yeah, I don't have all my wide receiver rankings done yet, but yeah, he's he's fallen for me. In Ray's league, I actually have Edwards and Chanel. I had him from Devi. Oh, yeah, not super happy with those, but I early in this off season I moved Chenault. And Noah Fant or CD Lamb, and I'm pretty pumped about it. Wow! Yeah, I would be. I'd be ecstatic. Be. Mm. See, there you go. And that's that's, that's what, what he does best. Get him the ball in space. Let him let him play with it. I mean, for his size, he's a special athlete. For sure. For sure. Maybe not special, but he's a great athlete. Yeah, the problem like, is people watch a highlight tape and they'll watch this. Like, oh, that's what he can do all the time. He doesn't do that all the time. Right. Don't watch highlight tapes. Mm-mm. Unless you're in this, like, 45-round Devi draft and, like, that's all you really have are high school <laughs> right. Did you see Kyle Yates uh, put a, 
a tweet out about that, and then I did the day before, like, stop watching highlights. No, nah, I didn't see Oh, that. really? It's funny. Yeah. That's funny. I mean, it gives you an idea of what they can do in the, the best of best. You have to know what they do on the normal and the low, too. Yeah, I mean, I, there's nothing yeah. wrong with pulling it up on YouTube if you got, like, five minutes real quick. All right, let me see what this guy looks like. Let me see what kind mm -hmm. of athlete he is. But if you really want to it's evaluate him, yeah, mm -hmm. you have to. A, a lot of times anymore, I used to, I actually used to really enjoy watching highlight tapes. Anymore, I actually have almost completely stopped watching highlight tapes altogether. Because what it does, at least for me in my evaluation process, is I, those plays stick in my mind. And I start to judge him more on those plays than I do the tape I'm literally watching at the moment. And so I've actually altogether almost stopped watching highlight tapes with a few exceptions, just because I, I know with my process, I allow some of that stuff to stick in more than I allow what I normally see. Dude, see, I would have, so like, if I'm Colorado oh, and I can't throw him an accurate pass, dude, I'm doing this all day. Right. So, I mean, you want to go back to the, the first one on the other sideline. He hesitated yeah, and then went up field to gain more yards. So, yeah, this player here. Just he said, it means fourth and two. This is fourth and two. Cuts inside, then outside, then waits, and then goes forward and gets another five yards. That, that's not normal right. for a receiver. And and that that's what you get. That's the benefit of getting him. And then you'll see it in this other one, too. My favorite on this next one, when he goes to the left, he hesitates, stops, and then cuts back inside. A lot of guys will just, that's a good enough game. Go out of bounds. Right, so watch here, yep. Goes outside. Guadalajara's right here. Nope. Cuts inside. And gets another, what, five yards. Yeah, to me, that, that's what made Percy Harfin special versus just a good athlete. This is attitude and vision and knowing how to win, not just out athlete. Mm -hmm. Tonight, uh-uh. That's not the issue. Montez sets up a screen. We're still in the third quarter. Yeah. Overall, um, the the pack defenses weren't you know they weren't big 10 they weren't sec defenses um but it's also not like he's playing you know in the uh in the mac or something like that and you know there's there's some talented players out there and uh i, I think there i think there's enough where if he falls far enough and all of a sudden it's like yeah i'm at two four i'm at two five i'm just gonna take the ceiling guy and I think I think that's kind of where it is. Where I saw enough against good teams, what could be. But the thing is, I'm not counting on him outside of like three years down the road. I don't I don't know that he's going to be able to produce day one unless the team's willing to commit to him being that. You know, we're going to utilize him all over the field. He's going to be a weapon for us more than developing a, as a receiver. But if that's the case, that actually worries me for his long-term potential um, as opposed to if they need him to be a receiver. I mean, did you see his technique on that bike? Just subpar. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, come on. <laughs> Put some effort into it. Lean. You're not being efficient. <laughs> No, I agree with you. This is, he's a floor ceiling guy. That's what he is. And and th there's a chance Garrett after three years in the NFL, he's not even in the NFL anymore. It, it That's a possibility happen. too. I'd hate to see it, but you're right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not taking this guy unless it's late second. I mean, he'll be he'll be a round two, round three, yeah. round four guy. Two eight three. I'm saying the NFL four, draft. Three two. Oh, okay. That could be round. Two through four. That's not yeah. Guaranteed. And I remember preseason they were talking about him as oh, he could go top ten. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, this running back ain't bad though. Little number eight here. He does some nice things. Who is this guy? I don't know. I haven't scouted him. Yeah. I just see him shedding tackles and making nice, nice games. Too busy on the graduates, man. I haven't got to the debut report yet. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> It's not like you have a lot going on in your personal life it's for nothing. Yeah, it's like, you didn't just move or anything. Yeah, no I, I should post about that. I'm so pumped about my new place. Look at that. He's just a good athlete. Well, that's that. See you guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you got to poop again? So, so here you go, Garrett. Who do you rank higher between those two? 
Uh, I have Edwards higher um, by about two or three spots here. Actually, I'll pull it up right now so I can tell you exactly. Jayback, where do you have him? Um, I'm going to pull up my rankings. So these are these are our tape scores um, from – uh, that we're going to be talking about. And Jared, I talked a lot about tape scores today uh, in the dynasty nerds when we were breaking down the, uh, the running back. So I kind of talked more about, you know, where we have them. So right now I have one, two, three. One, two, three. You guys should well, plug back all right. Too, so by the way. Edwards, I have nine. Um, he, it's a little lower than I thought. I have Edwards at nine. And I have Visca at 14. Um, so, yeah, I actually might not even be – it feels a little low. I, I, I probably need to go through and, and look at, at all the numbers again. Um, but I really, of them? I who's, really who's, dinged him a lot for, like, some of his route running and stuff. Like, I have Gandy Golden ahead of him. Oh. Um, I have – let's see. I have Hamler ahead of him, uh, which I don't like, but it, it just kind of how it all came out. I tried to be true to what I saw in each thing. He, mm-hmm. I didn't love his his catch radius. Um, I I don't know. So so part part of it for me is this. So like you know we're we're always looking at the positives and negatives of players. You know, mm-hmm. no player is perfect. You know, and I think sometimes we can really highlight on the the negatives so much. A good coach is going to see what he can do well and put him in those situations. A bad sure. coach is going to try and fix him everything like Patterson. He's never going to be everything. So really, we don't know. For me, I'm going to take Chenault over Edwards okay. because there's a chance he can be a fantasy asset for me. Edwards, I don't think it's ever really going to be there hmm. based on athletic ability, based on after the catch, based on that stuff. I think Edwards is going to be a chain mover. He'll have some splash plays, some splash games, but I don't think he's ever going to be enough for me to get more excited than Chenault could be a wide receiver too. Yeah, you're going for ceiling. So I'll just go for ceiling. Yeah, I understand that. I probably wouldn't personally ever take out uh, Chanel over Edwards in mine, um, but I'm a little higher than on Edwards than you are. Right. Okay. I have like Jefferson over him, Michael Pittman over him, over Chanel. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Brandon Ayuk that. like right in front of him. Uh, I like Andy Golden too. T Higgins is up there, so. Uh, those are just some of the names, but to talk about the nerd score, because we've been putting out those graphics lately. Mm-hmm. So uh, the dynasty nerds, some of the guys on the team, uh, we we take a look at the the prospects that are coming in, and we have all these different categories that go into wide receiver. What makes a good wide receiver? What makes a good running back? Um, how do we project them to being good in the NFL and being good fantasy players? And we grade them on a ten point scale on all those categories and then it weights into a final score and then we average that out throughout the team and then that's the nerd score so um there's a lot more categories that go into those scores than what you just see on those graphics uh, but that, that's how we do it and it's going to be something that we can look back on a few years from now and compare guys um it'll be cool to use yeah, that's some people were asking about like, okay, you have, you know, this guy at a 77.4, you know, what was, what was Josh Jacobs at last year? Well, unfortunately, this is our first year of doing it. So we won't, you know, we can't necessarily go backwards. We could tell you roughly where we thought we would have had them. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the nice part is we'll be able to actually give you a numerical value of, okay, this is the highest ranked wide receiver that I've had in the past three classes. And we can say that fairly definitively just based on tape. Now, You'll, you'll look at these later because they will get posted to the website. They will differ from our rankings. Um, and the reason is this is literally just tape. And I think that's why Biscas is a bit lower for me than players that I would actually probably take him ahead like Hamler. Um, you know, Gandy Golden, I'd probably take him ahead of those guys. Mm-hmm. But on just raw tape, there wasn't enough for me to be able to just by saying like, Oh yeah, his football IQ is this. Oh yeah, his release is this. Those numbers kind of knocked it down a little bit. So his tape score is going to be a little bit lower than I might actually rank him, if that makes sense. 